zero, basically everybody knows that you will not make your emission zero at any at a given point, whether it is 2050 by EU or US and other uh, richer countries, so-called developed countries, or 2060 by China or 2070. That means even by that target deadline, your emissions of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases will continue and you will do something to suck in the carbon dioxide. And there are three, basically three pathways through which you can suck in so-called sinks can be created for, uh, in fact, two pathways, but the third is actually sometime used in lieu of that. So the, what is the first pathway? Sorry, I should uh, speak a little bit slowly. There is a translation. So uh, the first pathway is biological. So either you create a forest, that means a plantation. You cannot create a forest. You create a plantation, which is called afforestation, and which is also very far from what a forest is that everybody knows. And by that, you uh, calculate that that kind of forest, how much carbon dioxide it will uh, sequester, it will suck in and store as uh, carbon in its body over a certain period of years, number of years, and then per year, what is the carbon sequestration? The second route for second biological uh, pathway is agriculture. In fact, uh, everybody knows, and all of these examples I am giving, these are already in practice, not from today, for the last several years, more than a decade. These are already being practiced or being as projects in different countries, including India. So the uh, second route of the biological pathway is agriculture. As everybody knows, agriculture, the standard chemical industrial agriculture is a net carbon emitter. So if you can uh, practice in a different way, so that some of the other practices like natural farming, organic farming, whatever kind of agrological practice, which are also shown to be much less carbon intensive. So some of these are supposed to sequester much more carbon in the soil. So soil carbon content goes up. So you calculate how much soil carbon you have sequestered over a large area. So you that becomes your carbon credit. And then that uh, that become, uh, acts as a sink. The second, uh, the third route for the biological pathway is the so-called blue carbon. And I'll not go into detail. The blue carbon basically is phytoplankton. So uh, there and all these routes have very serious consequences for communities which depend on forests, which is something like 20, 23 percent in India, at least the small and marginal farmers and the coastal fish workers. So these are have serious consequences. The second pathway is mechanical chemical that you suck in carbon dioxide either from the ambient air or from a smokestack and then suck in the gases and then separate carbon dioxide and then either pump it underground in a salt or old salt mine, some kind of cavern or under the sea, or, and those are all impermanent, non-permanent, because there is no guarantee that those carbon dioxide, uh, hundreds of thousands of tons or millions of tons will not leak out. Uh, or you can try to react it with some kind of chemical so that it becomes rock. It's That's a permanent sequestration, like it's being done in the Iceland project. So this is the basically the second pathway, which is mechanical chemical pathway, where by which you can suck out carbon dioxide. I'm not talking about reducing because the reduction part is uh, a very uh, different thing. Because what the net zero plans all talk about, that will reduce our emissions to some extent, but will not reduce it to zero, the actual zero. But the whatever our emissions will be in that target date, by that target date, all of that emission will also be uh, sucked in by some kind of a sink, either a biological sink or a mechanical chemical sink. So the third pathway, which need not be or should not be calculated, but which is often used in this, is kind of projects which are efficiency increases. Like, you know, the Delhi Metro Rail use regenerative braking. So that's one. The Indian government's uh, POA under CDM of uh, replacing uh, filament bulbs, large scale en masse replacement by LEDs, CFLs, and then LEDs. Those are also for the same amount of work or service, you are using much less energy and em emitting much less carbon dioxide. But that should be con uh, considered as part of the reduction, not as balancing or offsetting. And let me also uh, make this statement clearly here that. This net zero plan, all the net zero plans, and everybody knows that all major economies, everyone that has submitted these action plans, there are NDCs in uh, UNFCCC. India has not submitted its second version. It's still the Paris version. 
all of them have submitted net zero. None of them have submitted zero, actual real zero plans. So the uh, these are very clearly connected with the carbon markets and offsetting through offsetting and carbon markets. So let us first uh, uh, take try to take some of these net zero claims at the face value. Like say, government of India, uh, represented by our head of the government, Mr. Modi, he said that India will achieve net zero by 2070. Very, very good. Uh, most uh, uh, rich countries have said 2050, we said 2070. The other point I need to uh, put in here, like we are discussing net zero and these things as if these are without a context. The real context is there is a climate crisis developing where already uh, not millions, but hundreds of millions of people are affected by even estimates, something like 30 million people, 30 to 40 million gets impacted severely every year. And the number of climate refugees are also now past 10 million. So those kind of context are there, but what is the deadline? Because 2050, 2060, 2070, these are just plucked out of uh, somewhere. The If you go, if you have to find a deadline, of some deadlines, like uh, I think Kalani Menon said this, that what we go by, I, I would rather go by the best available science. I am not, uh, in, as an individual or none of us are able to do that kind of science which IPCC does. Of course, knowing that IPCC reports are not exactly the scientific report, those are validated by government representatives. But even then, that is the best available science available in the public domain. The IPCC sixth assessment report, working group one report as uh, released this August says very clearly, we'll like, we are very likely to reach 1.5 degrees Celsius, which is, you have to remember the Paris Agreement goal is keeping the global temperature, average temperature rise well below two degrees Celsius by 2100 and trying to keep it below 1.5 degrees. Best efforts to try to keep it one point, below 1.5. The latest scientific assessment, which is not exactly latest, uh, we know why it is not, I'm not going into details, if there are questions, I'll explain, that in the decade of 2030 to 2040, we'll reach and probably breach the 1.5 degree Celsius target. This is also very clear. Last year was 1.2 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial average. The global average is already 1.1 degrees Celsius above the pre-industrial average. The current decadal rate of temperature rise is 0.22 degrees Celsius. So it's very simple arithmetic. And as of now, the science shows that num the amount of accumulated carbon dioxide in the atmosphere results directly. If you do not take the positive feedback mechanisms, which accelerates the climate change, if you do not take into account, if you disregard them, even then it is a, then it is a linear relationship. So the more if you double this, the heating the amount of heating doubles. That's the warming potential, the forcing. So in even in that simple arithmetic, in the decade of 2030 to 2040s, we'll touch at least touch 1.5 degrees Celsius. Now, in that context, let us try to understand these net zero claims. Because all of them still are saying that we'll keep it under 1.5 degrees. Uh, let us take any country. Let's take, uh, then I'll take the global uh, figure and then Indian figure. So the global figure is today in 2019, the global emission of just carbon dioxide from fossil carbons was 36.7 billion tons. That is uh, 3,670 crore tons. Uh, 1 billion is 100 crores. So most of the net zero plans were targeting something like 40% or more from offsetting, some through carbon market, large part through carbon markets, some part in their own countries to some mechanical means. So uh, let us assume not even 40%, 30% of these emissions will be uh, attempted to be offset by the biological because that is the cheapest method. Because all countries, and uh, as we know, one of the most contested issues right from Paris Agreement was the Article 6. And out of the three mechanisms proposed in Article 6, the main two are market mechanisms, Article 2 and uh, 6.2 and 6.4. The 6.8 is non-market mechanism. So most of the uh, effort emphasis is on market, reducing the carbon, achieving net zero through the market mechanism, the carbon markets. But like people have talked about how money can be transferred, et cetera, et cetera, even earlier. So if we take the 36.7 billion tons 
emission of 2019. It reduced by 5.8% in 2020, not because of our good intentions, but because of COVID and lockdowns. And in 2021, it has again back up to 36.4 already. So we are back into 19, 2019 levels. We probably will also cross that. So just consider that one third of it will try to sequester through massive plantations, not forest, forests are not possible to be, and some kind of biological pathways. Uh, how much land will be required for that? As we know, there are uh, the forests in the world, there are various kind of uh, carbon sequestration capacities. Largest fraction of forest in the world is the boreal forest, which is north of Russia, Canada, all of these areas. And there the carbon sequestration capacity is 0.8 to 1.2 tons per year per hectare. The best forest in the best lands with uh, tropical rainforest and all go up to five to six. The average in India or uh, good areas come to around two, 2.5, not more than that. That is the two, two to 2.5 tons per, per hectare per year. So if you want to sequester 12 billion tons of carbon or carbon dioxide every year at a rate of two tons per hectare, you need six billion hectares. The total land area of the earth is 13.3 or billion hectares. The present total forest area on the earth is 4.06 billion hectares. And we need 6 billion hectares just to sequester one third of the carbon dioxide. So how feasible is it? I don't know. Maybe uh, we'll not put natural gas. We'll put the net zero gas inside the earth. The earth will expand. The earth's area will expand. So we'll have more area, more uh, land mass will be created on the earth. That kind of calculation is fine. But otherwise, on a 13.3 billion hectare uh, global land area, how will you uh, use 6 billion hectares for additional sequestration? There are already 4 billion hectares of forest. Uh, even that is being cut down. So that's a question. Similar calculation can be done for India very quickly. India has an Indian uh, prime minister this time has not even mentioned the 2015 pledge, the third uh, pledge number three, that India will sequester 2.5 to 3 gigatons of carbon by 2030. So these are some announcements which are vague, like the prime minister's announcements of 1 billion tons reduction, whether it is per year or entire period. If it is for the entire period, it is meaningless. Today, India's carbon dioxide emission is around 2.7 gigaton every year. And if you consider carbon dioxide equivalent, it is over three gigatons. So if we say for the entire period, we'll uh, reduce by one gigaton, that has no meaning. But if it is one gigaton, that has substantial meaning. But even if that is one gigaton per year, how much land is required? 500 million hectares. What is the India, India's total land area? 328 million hectares. So I don't know whether India can have multi-tire lands where land, uh, plantations and other things can be planted down, up, and three-story, four-story plantations, and all the land will be useful for sequestration. The solar energy will come through, the land will probably, multi-tile land will be productive. So uh, you can understand the practicality of going through the biological route. Now come to the mechanical chemical route. What are the technologies? Like uh, some mentions have been made, there are technologies, there will be technologies. We know of the technologies. There are several, Climax is the uh, most hyped technology, which is being applied in Iceland. What is the technology? You are sucking in from the ambient air where the uh, concentration is 0 0.04, 0.04%, uh, that is 419, that means 400 ppm you consider that 0.04% of the, so the energy in requirement is quite huge. The uh, sequester, the separated carbon dioxide is, uh, reacted with underground uh, special kind of rock so that it turns into calcium carbonate for a long-term storage. What is the cost coming to? For that 500 ton uh, plant, the cost is around $240 per ton. What is the price of carbon dioxide today in the world? The highest price is around $20-$25, oh. not more than that. And many of the voluntary market prices are $4, $5, $3. So who is going to pay for that? If you, if any group, any country, any entity, and now let us come to how countries are going to achieve their net zero targets. Uh, prime ministers and presidents don't have a knob uh, regulator like we have the fan regulator. They don't have a regulator 
that whenever they think now it is time for one gigaton release, they turn down the knob. They have to say, they have to give targets to every sector. They have to tell the electricity sector, okay, your carbon dioxide emission is this much. So in the next five years, in the next 10 years, this much reduction is required. The steel sector, which is another second biggest, the aluminum sector, the cement sector, the petroleum sector, transportation, even agriculture. So how do they do this? They first tell it, give it, uh, give the allotment to the sectors. And in the sectors, different entities, corporations, entities, they have to achieve this target. So how do they do this? If these two, the biological and mechanical chemical methods are really not feasible and in a market mechanism, and let, let's come down to then the market mechanism because that's being, uh, if, if we look back a little bit in history, and I'll look back in history a little bit on the, for my last part. What happened over the market mechanism and carbon sequestration attempts or carbon reduction attempts over the last 20 years of carbon markets almost. So if these entities, companies, municipalities, or even states or whoever, if they are given the target, what will they do? They will have to look for the cheapest method. And as of now, the quote unquote cheapest method, cheapest means as of now, explicit economic cost, forget about the human cost, forget about the rights violation, forget about the land, uh, land degradation, just the explicit economic cost, the cheapest is forest. Because we all know agriculture, the carbon sequestration is really not permanent, permanent even for a decade, because agricultural soil, the moment it is disturbed, the moment it is plowed, the microbial, microbial activity in the soil increases, carbon dioxide emission increases. Only forests have been some permanence of a few decades, even forests are not permanent. The third point, the one point that I also need to mention about forest, because that is looked at the best, cheapest, uh, the best and uh, cheapest method, as we say in India, that is uh, globally accepted now. That's why this red plus and other schemes are being pushed continuously. And that's where the market should be coming now. And that's where there is a major consequence for Indian communities and similar countries where people still are forest dependent. So forest cannot keep on absorbing carbon indefinitely. Once a mature forest, a forest becomes mature, its carbon, new carbon sequestration capacity goes down drastically because some trees dry, some biomass dies, becomes carbon dioxide, even worse, become methane, which is in a short time, 90% as powerful as carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas for warming. And then new carbon is sucked in. So over a period of time, forest, mature forest, sequester less and less and less. So if that is the cheapest method, and we have to have multiple in multi multi-tire India, that is multi-tire lands in India to do that, then uh, what will be the method of doing that? I don't know whether anybody, any expert has worked out. And where that plantation will be done. Maybe moon or Mars will be better place if there is water and air and kind of things available. We can do the plantations there and offset from in, uh, from the earth. So let me last part uh, come down to the, and also po uh, pointing out that if you are having, uh, whether it is real sequestration or not sequestration, immaterial. If a company can show in its account book it has sequestered so much of carbon by giving this much money to a, a poor country farmers or forest dwellers for or a company for doing this plantation, then it's okay. And they will obviously look for the cheapest method because nobody will go for a $240 solution, per ton solution, if there is a $10 solution or a $5 solution. Quote unquote solution, you have to put on their quotes. Now, those are $5, $10 solutions at the cheapest, which are forest based and a plantation based. Uh, let us uh, turn to uh, what actually happened in this kind of attempts earlier, because this is nothing new. As Chandrabhushan said, uh, even net zero is not new. Sequestration is not new. Sink is not new. All of these are 30, 40 years old. And even in practice, it is more than 20 years old. One of the very uh, well-known uh, globally hyped projects of uh, one of these areas is that Kenya uh, project is uh, Tebita Taute uh, County, uh, where uh, first one ranch of something like 20,000 uh, acres, and then uh, in the phase two, 13 ranches were brought in under a kind of red plus project. What happened after that? Uh, I'll not go into the details because I want to give what happened in India also as a result of this. 
the farmers after a year how much money they got because uh, after the calculations the money that the certifiers the validators the project proponents the company uh, the uh, the company was wildlife uh, wildlife works a company which uh, operated this project which took money from uh, carbon market and put money here in kenya so that uh, uh, several thousand uh, hectares were uh, put together for this carbon sequestration project carbon sink project what happened the farmers got something like uh, uh, i don't know the exact figure the figures have been quoted something like 5 to 10 dollars uh, after one year so that's a big amount of money that the farmers got which will solve their problems uh, for the branch but other problem was like uh, uh, kalani was saying earlier because of the existing inequalities existing land distribution land ownership disparities most of the money was received by the big ranch owner there were three 13 ranches up to phase 3 phase 2 most of the money went to the big ranch owners very little money went to the small farmers or for small people who joined in this project what happens in india we also know what happens in this kind of carbon sequestration and carbon reduction projects i will not give examples of carbon reduction projects of uh, uh, adani mundra power plant 4620 uh, megawatt coal power plant they have received more than 100 million dollars uh, i'll not also talk about reliance sashan which has devastated the lives of adivasis in uh, singrauli district around 2000 adivasis they have brutalized lives and we have documentations we have made studies we have photographs jo has far better photographs what happened there uh, they got uh, around they are claiming they have got uh, 1100 crores they actually got money from uh, carbon market cdm but even if we come to uh, proper sinks not reductions uh, come to meghalaya uh, uh, patch of uh, earlier patch of uh, sacred forest in moflong something like 20 kilometers uh, uh, north or south of shillong comes under the carbon market a company called community forestry international comes in from california based company invest some money how much money people have received what benefit they have lost when we talk to people we means when our local friend activist friends we also went to study there but since we don't speak the language our local language speaking activist friends senior friends journalist friends when they talk to them they are all afraid to talk they said we will not talk to you it's complete secrecy complete lack of transparency only two people mr lingdo and his family they know what has come what has been distributed you come to even remote areas of india mizoram 400 square kilometer of forest suddenly comes under the sequestration carbon sink project red project uh, an indian government though it is not officially accepted indian government has already uh, conducted red, uh, red readiness workshops to prepare this and uh, here i should also mention after uh, uh, mr modi announced uh, his uh, made his grand grand announcements in paris in 2015 of the third pledge that 2.5 to 3 gigatons of carbon will be sequestered in the next 15 years uh, within the next few months if you have noticed there was another announcement by the ministry that 40% of the quote unquote degraded forest will be given to private companies for plantation and what are these degraded forest most of these are areas where these are commons of the forest villages and forest friendly villages so the design is clear through the sequestration and sink carbon sinks which are essential if you have to do net zero not real zero net zero that means you will still emit carbon dioxide and i'm not talking about other gases nitrous oxide methane those are additional planting trees don't sequester nitrous oxide planting trees don't sequester methane so those are additional so just the carbon dioxide which is today 36.7 billion tons and which is supposed to increase because after paris Four years. Paris was 2015 December. The agreement was signed. 16, 17, 18, 19. Every year, the CO2 emission and the total GHG emission, CO2 equivalent, all increased. Only in 2020, it decreased because of pandemic and lockdowns. So our emissions will increase beyond today's 36.7 billion tons. So we'll have to sequester even more than 12 billion tons if we go for even one third of the sequestration through biological route. we don't have any technology demonstrated today at scale for 
chemical the mechanical chemical route not one technology which has demonstrated in scale except enhanced oil recovery that means you pump up the flared gas burnt flared gas into the oil well depleting oil well or a deep oil well to in, to produce more petroleum so that obviously is not a, a carbon sink project that people will uh, think that is uh, sur- serving a net zero project because that will be for producing more oil so if you take that out there is not a single technology chandrabhushan talked about lot of technologies will be available yes it might be available but again come back to this you supposing you have the land now forget about there is no land on the earth for that kind of plantation supposing you do have land uh, you have multi tier land your farm lands are multi tier it's not uh, right it's not true but imagine that trees don't start uh, sequestering right away for any significant sequestration like normally a big tree uh, after 8 to 10 years start sequestering 25 to 28 kg per year so to reach that stage you need 8 to 10 years and don't forget when all of you when all of us should not forget that the best available science says that by and not only the ipcc report the un emission emission gap report all of them are saying by 2030 we must reduce our emission by at least 45% if we have to have any chance of staying within the 1.5 degree goal so by 2030 in the next 9 years we can probably plant some uh, vaccine for trees which will make them grow overnight that is uh, uh, some technology which might come i don't know about which technology uh, which company which uh, methodology that technology is coming into but otherwise you cannot force trees to grow overnight they need at least 8 to 10 years to grow and sequester substantial amount that is 25 kg 26 kg per year not month per year so we don't have that much time if these so called net zero technologies and sequestration and sinks massive sinks were started 20 years ago there was a possibility though there is no land very clearly but even if there was a possibility of sequestering part of this before 2030 now before 2030 you cannot have sequestration of any significant part of to even two days emission that is the 36.7 billion tons of carbon dioxide and again we are not talking about methane and nitrous oxide and together all of these today constitute around 59 gigaton that is the carbon dioxide equivalent so we are not even talking about that we are talking about just the 36.7 billion tons of carbon dioxide from fossil fuels so there is no land not enough land available trees don't grow overnight we don't have any technology available today which can sequester even if you if you are willing to pay 200 dollars the iceland the technology that has been employed the employed in iceland is not employable everywhere it is highly geology and geomorphology specific you don't have that kind of rock everywhere and in iceland they can do it because geothermal energy is plentiful and they are not calculating the cost of the geothermal energy being is very high so total cost comes to even then 200 dollars plus uh, 220 to 30 dollars per ton so how do you do this sequestration which is essential for net zero that is beyond my per- uh, comprehension if somebody uh, some expert somewhere is able to Uh, so what technology has been demonstrated and if we even if we assume this is my my last comment even if we assume that some technology will come along if you look at technological transition history no technology except in the digital sphere has matured and been applied in large scale in less than 35 years no technology in the world supposing you do a massive scale uh, investment 10 to 15 years you still don't have time you have to reduce by 45% at least in the next 10 next 9 years and you are talking about some technology which will come will which mature and which will be viable so uh, that's why i think my last comment is this is a global scam the net zero business people have submitted this only with the target that okay this is a problem we have created to make profit we will continue to make profit out of our fossil fuel businesses it's a problem of the next generation and their next generation so hi kids we have created the problem we have made the money now it's your turn do whatever you can good night <laughs> so that kind of thing is right there 
So with that, I will also end my saying, repeating that this global plans of net zero is a big global scam and that needs to be acknowledged as a scam.